everyone. Welcome. Uh, look, here's the thing. We weren't going to do a show today. Uh, I'm a diseased biohazard. We have like six other shoots planned. We weren't going to do this. But then Anupam Kher said this. During an interview with IBN Live, Kher expressed his fear of stating his religious identity. When prodded further, he said that he is scared to say that he is a Hindu and if he puts a tikka on his forehead and wears orangish clothes, people might brand him as an RSS guy or BJP fanatic. Oh Anupam, you crazy psychopath. That's not how right-wing Hindutva stereotypes work. It's like if you wear all white and three gold chains. That's too many. It really is generic garb, but everyone will think you're in politics and no one will mess with you. Worst case scenario, someone thinks you're one half of a Basmastan and still no one messes with you. That's how that stereotype works. You don't have to be afraid of anyone. Everyone's too busy being afraid of you. But that wasn't even the craziest thing that happened to Anupam Kher this week. A few days later, this happened. And let's shift focus back once again to that Visa Rao actor Anupam Kher, remember, who is uh, crying foul and saying that Pakistan chose to single him out in a group of 18 Indian invitees for the Karachi Lit Fest. Now, I hate our idea of Pakistan as much as the next guy, but I kind of had to agree with them on this one. Because sometimes, Mr. Kher, you sound insane. Why would a foreign country want you to come on over and hand you a microphone? And even when you sound lucid, you're wildly inconsistent. First you hate the award, then when you get the award, you're like, wee, Also, why are you offended? Shouldn't this be like a huge compliment? On a Hindutva nationalist CV, isn't denied entry into Pakistan the same as a regular CV has worked at Google? Okay, my hatred for Anupam Kher is now so absolute that I actually kind of like him. <laughs> He's so insane. It's endearing. He's so crazy. It's cute. At first, we had nothing in common. We were poles apart. And now, eventually, we've fallen in love. It really is like me and him are in a romantic comedy together. Now that I'm here, we might as well talk about the biggest story of the week. But before we start, I want to make one thing clear from the outset. It's okay to be against homosexuality. It's okay to hate gays and lesbians and transgenders. It's totally okay because I hate Pepsi. I think Pepsi is wrong. It doesn't mix well with Old Monk. It doesn't mix well with Jack Daniels. Why would any reasonable person drink Pepsi when thumbs up is a thing that exists? I don't understand this. Let me just clear this stuff up. <clears throat> How can you have dinner with Pepsi? How can you take Pepsi home with you? How can you put Pepsi into your mouth? You get what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Pepsi sucks. But should Pepsi be illegal just because I, and I'm guessing most people, think it's an abomination unto God? No. That'd be stupid. It's like the number three cola manufacturer in the world. Millions of freaks enjoy this thing. Let them have it. Metaphor. Sum up. If Article 377 gets repealed, you don't have to change your views about homosexuality. Life is going to be exactly the same. Homosexuality won't be all up in your face. You will not turn randomly into a homosexual. And it doesn't mean you'll have to fulfill a weekly quota of gay sex. Unless you want to, in which case definitely go for it. Now, any time someone asks me for my views on homosexuality or the legality of it, I refer to a quote I heard in 2004. Um, Reverend Al Sharpton at the time was running to become the Democratic nominee for the President of the United States. And he was asked point blank um, what his views on gay marriage were. At the time, this was just beginning to become an issue that was being debated. Now keep in mind, Reverend Al Sharpton is an African American who has seen and suffered and fought against slavery and segregation. Um, he's also a reverend, a Baptist minister, in fact. So keep those two factors in mind when you hear what he said. He said, whatever my personal feelings may be about gay and lesbian marriages, unless you are prepared to say gays and lesbians are not human beings, they should have the same constitutional rights of any other human being. Amen, Reverend. 
Thank you so much for joining us on this special mini episode. We'll be right back the week after next with a proper show for you. Until then, subscribe to the channel, check out some of the older videos, like and share this one. If the world doesn't end or I don't die, we will see you next time. Bye-bye.